Hello and welcome to the CNBC TV 18 special. Today I'm coming to you from the Oberoi Hotel in New Delhi. Incidentally, this is the country's first luxury hotel. Its doors were opened in 1965. The Oberoi in New Delhi is now going to be temporarily shut down for two years as the group is planning restoration. Let's find out from the Oberoi family why this restoration could prove to be a game changer for the group. Capital City's iconic hotel, the Oberoi New Delhi, was built by the Hospitality Group's founder, Rai Bahadur M.S. Oberoi, more than half a century ago. His son, P.R.S. Oberoi, popularly known as Biki, spent the better part of the last two years drawing up plans to revamp this 283-room hotel. We take a trip down memory lane with the 87-year-old industry legend. As India's first luxury hotel, the Oberoi New Delhi was also the country's first hotel to offer 24-hour in-room dining and butler service. It was also the first hotel to introduce the concept of a private club for business meetings. India's first 24 by 7 coffee shop was also started from this hotel. That was eventually turned into the 360, a famous restaurant that redefined fine dining and also introduced sushi to the capital city. PRS Oberoi believes it's the end of an era. It is history because a lot of important people have stayed here over the years. And we've had some very loyal customers. And most of them have been very, very happy. So it's, uh, I think a lot of people will be very nostalgic. I'm personally sad, in a way. <laughs> but it's a decision you had to take. Was it only done by business? Had you been convinced about it or did you know, yes, now it is time to upgrade? Well, we've been thinking about it for several years. Uh, and with new hotels opening, more competition, this is the right time, I think, to start, commence the, re the, the restoration of the hotel. Was this your decision to temporarily shut down uh, or was it the investors or your family, the younger family members that told you, no, we have to do this? No, I think it was a collective decision. Decision. Were you the last one to come on board with the decision? No, I was probably the first one. <laughs> you were the first one? Probably. <laughs> and then you had to convince no, the others? but everybody recognizes this a hotel that's f over 50 years old, something has to be done. So how is it going to get better and bigger? What are you going to keep over here, not keep here? What is the plan? Well, it won't be any bigger, <laughs> unfortunately. In fact, the number of rooms are going, going to be reduced because we need larger bathrooms, some bigger rooms. So uh, that is going to be all new. All the interiors will be new and all the furniture will be new. The restaurants will be re redesigned. Mm. We've been working on this project for the last two years, actually. And are you going to do this across hotels, beginning with this? Well, we, we don't have a many old hotels like this. Mm. We have a couple, and we'll, we'll see when we, we have to do them. I don't want to take too much work at the, on at the same time. And how long do you think it will take to restore this hotel? We hope 18 months, mm. but maximum of two years. Mr. Obra, you're known to be a perfectionist. Do you think you'll be able to stick to your own timeline of 18 months? Well, they call me a perfectionist. I think it's exaggerated. <laughs> You're not sure? Right? Um, I think we can do it in 18 months. I think so. You will be on top of them to make sure that they do? Yes, I'll be here very frequently. So when the new hotel opens, are we going to have a 360? Are we going to have a Taipan? We'll have a Taipan. Mm -hmm. We'll have a 360. Uh, and things will, the restaurants will remain uh, the same, same atmosphere. I hope that people like them. Now tell me a little bit about the journey. How was it conceived? How long was it, you know, did it take to build this? It is in the sense the first luxury hotel in the country. It was the first luxury hotel in the country. Well, uh, the hotel opened, as you know, in 1965. Uh, we started work in around 61, so it took four years to build. Uh, my father had, had gone around the world looking at uh, several hotels. He asked me also because I traveled a lot. And when he came back, he said, no, we have to make much better than hotels that exist elsewhere. 
and this hotel was considered one of the best in the world mm. for many years. So I have a lot of good memories about this hotel. So let's discuss the memories. Which is your most memorable moment in this hotel? I think when it opened. You remember the day like it was yesterday? Yes, it, was, I, it opened in September, as far as I can recall. And the war with Pakistan happened at that time. Hmm. And uh, the siren went off and we had to go to the basement. There were no bombs, fortunately. Yeah. So you opened the hotel and we were suddenly at war with Pakistan. Yeah. So you, you opened for business and what, the restaurants were opened, you had customers staying in the hotels? How we had cu customers staying in the hotel. Not that many, we had a lot of guests hmm. uh, we had invited. And uh, the, la the war didn't last that long. Yeah. And while it lasted, we had a lot of foreign correspondents here in oh. the hotel. So they stayed here? So they stayed here. Just to understand, you know, it was at that time the country's first luxury hotel, perhaps our first, you know, tryst with a five-star hotel. What were the prices like? As far as I can remember, it's a long time ago. I think a room was about 80 rupees. Oh, 80 rupees? But that was a fortune back then. Yes. <laughs> what happened in 1971? There were no uh, air raid alarms. Hmm. Uh, the hotel functioned uh, perfectly well. Uh, there was no blackout, as far as I can remember. Uh, everything was normal. But whenever uh, there's a situation like that, we get a lot of foreign correspondents coming to stay at the hotel. And they get the budget to stay in this hotel? Oh, I, I presume so. <laughs> Otherwise, they wouldn't come. And looking back, who would you say has been the most famous guest that has stayed here? I think it would be unfair to name one person. Okay, name as many as you like. Then. No, no. <laughs> many heads of state. Hmm. Uh, important businessmen from within, from India and abroad, hmm. many from abroad have stayed here. And it wouldn't be fair to name one or two, I think. You know, like the U.S. presidents, for example, now have no choice but to stay in one of your competitor's hotels simply because, you know, they've managed to bring about all these security arrangements and gadgets. Are you going to equip the hotel with all of those no, now? No, we have all the gadgets, even now. <laughs> I think uh, the President of the United States says that uh, the Moria, uh, because they're very near the embassy, and mm. security is a problem these days. Okay, so it's not because the way it's always made out As far out as I be... know, that is the reason. Okay, because I've interviewed ITC in the past when, you know, Mr. Obama was going to stay there, and that's what they said, we have the state-of-the-art technology, it's the most secure hotel in the city, but oh. you don't think that's the case? Well, I don't know about their security, I don't want to say yes, good or bad, because yeah. I don't know. But our security is very, very good here. Okay. We have maybe 200 cameras. Hmm. You know, and our security staff are very uh, active. And uh, we take all the precautions. Some of our guests don't like all the security <laughs> measures we've taken. But you, I guess life also changed after 2611 for hotels. And they had to uh, you know, keep up, if I may say so, with the times and anticipate all the bad things. Yes. That must have been tough. Well, we are very uh, conscious about security hmm. and uh, we have a person who goes and checks our hotels for security, the chief security officer of the company, because times are bad and we have to be very, very careful. Yeah. You know, you have staff here for so many years. What's going to happen to them? Are you absorbing them in other hotels? Yes, we are sending some abroad, some to other hotels. Uh, some older people have uh, asked to be retired, hmm. so everybody's being taken care of. Mr. Oberoi, when you go to one of your hotels, what do you do to make sure everything is in place? Like, do you go for a tour? Where does it all start from? I don't go on a tour of the hotel. No? Uh, no. Uh, I, if I see anything wrong, I tell the, the general manager. Usually, I don't talk, give instructions to any other person other than general manager. So if I see something wrong, I tell him that this, this is not right, and they put it right. And our, our people are very good. Hmm. They have good eye for detail. So going forward, what can we expect in the new Obera? You told me that you're going to have better technology, smaller rooms, the bathrooms are going to be better. When we come back 18 months later, what can we expect? Wow. <laughs> wow? <laughs> yes. Thank you, Mr. Overoy, for joining Thank us here on CNBC much. TV 18. Thank you. With that time for a short commercial break, you're watching a CNBC TV 18 special where we're in conversation with the media shy Overoy family, finding out 
why they've decided to shut down temporarily the Oberoi Hotel in New Delhi. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the CNBC TV 18 special. Today I'm coming to you from the iconic Oberoi Hotel in New Delhi. It's going to be temporarily shut down for two years as the Oberoi family thinks this is the time for a restoration. Why is that the case? Well, I've been busy interviewing the media shy Oberoi family. The bold decision to shut down the hotel for restoration was spearheaded by the 87-year-old industry legend PRS Oberoi himself. He soon won over his son Vikram Oberoi and nephew Arjun Oberoi. The two younger Oberois had initially wanted to renovate the hotel in bits and pieces. You know, from, from day one, he was actually very, very clear. And, and Mr. Oberoi comes with so much experience and so much wisdom. Uh, we, we uh, in comparison, uh, have a lot less experience. And so, you know, we said, does it really need to be closed down? Can we do it over a few years? In, in, in stages and what was very nice about Mr. Oberoi was he said please go and look at it, evaluate it and let me know and so we, we, we met on two occasions um, had two meetings where we spent quite a lot of time to see if that could be done and just given the extensive work that needs to be done in the hotel we then came to the conclusion that the only way was to, to close it so down. So he already knew, but he had to wait for the kids to figure it out. He, he already knew, but he needed to wait for the kids to figure it out. And how long did it take you all to get on board? So actually it just took two, two meetings, but there were two meetings with all the project people, the design people. Um, and to, there was always consensus on who was going to be the new designers, the new architects, etc. Uh, Mr. Obro and Arjun uh, were involved in, in, in that decision. Um, and I think at that stage it wasn't even, we hadn't selected the, 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 the designers. Mr. Obro will, will have a better idea if we had selected the designers at that point. Because the decision to, to do this actually, or the thinking started well before today. Mm. Um, and you know it's been a it's been a, yeah. a long process and quite a lot of planning I was asking your father this question that you know you're doing this at this hotel which is pretty much the first luxury hotel in the country is this something you're going to do with your other hotels across the country well Bangalore you know we we've renovated Bangalore um, mm. and Bangalore just again given the, the way the hotel was was structured we could do Bangalore over two years uh, in doing closing half the rooms down renovating half the rooms and then the the second half so I think it really depends from hotel to hotel uh, to close a hotel down is always a big decision yeah. uh, and to close a large hotel down uh, which is very important uh, in terms of profitability is a, is, a, is a big decision but you know we're a company that never looks at tomorrow we we think long term uh, and I think thinking long term helps you take the right decisions if you think very short term you end up taking the wrong decisions um, uh, so we're fortunate in that we do think long term, but I think you, it's very hard to compare, um, uh, you know, two different, each hotel has to be evaluated on whether it can be done while the hotel is operational, uh, what is the extent of work that needs to be carried out, what is the disruption that will happen, uh, and then take, take a decision accordingly. I don't think you can, you know, one, one size, it's not a blanket decision. no, one size doesn't fit all. So you said the profitability will obviously be dented. It is one of your most famous hotels. You opened with 100% occupancy and you're shutting it when there's 100% occupancy. So for the rest of the group, I would imagine then the expansion plans would be put on hold. Are you going to think very carefully now about expanding? Well, we're going to work even harder. <laughs> so uh, We could uh, see new hotels being announced, we, well, you're saying? We, we're opening three hotels um, this year, uh, in, in the third quarter of this year. Uh, one hotel opens in Chandigarh, uh, one in Morocco, uh, in Marrakesh, and one in Ajman, which is uh, uh, an Emirates uh, not far mm. from Dubai, mm. uh, a beach resort. So we're opening three hotels this year, um, and and we, you know, we, we have to work harder. Uh, if if this hotel, how do we make other hotels more profitable? How do we drive profitability at other hotels? The three hotels that you're going to open in the third quarter were decided a long time back. The work was underway. So what I was trying to ask you was, could you look at opening new hotels in the 18 months, finalize new deals, when your profitability will be under question, it will be dented? Yeah. Is it possible? Yeah. Well, actually, profitability won't be dented uh, that much. We, 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 as I said, we'll work harder to drive uh, revenue um, and, and profitability. Uh, for our existing hotels, um, but 
having having said that, um, the you know we we continue to to look at expanding. Uh, we continue to look opening new hotels, um, and and we'll continue to to do that. And our approach towards expansion is through through management contracts mm. with some or no equity. Um, uh, unlike this hotel, which is entirely owned by by EIH, yeah. uh, so we'll, 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 we will continue to do that. PRS Oberoi's nephew Arjun Oberoi is equally nostalgic and causes the end of an era. But Arjun is convinced the Oberoi Hotel in its new avatar will raise the bar for the hospitality sector. It's a destination which is very, uh, very close to many people's minds and hearts because it became such a centre. Mm. for many activities, whether it was uh, celebrating an occasion or uh, a special function. Many guests here um, have seen their children get married here. and So it's, it's cross-generational, and in many ways uh, it has a place in, in many people's hearts, both in the city and, of course, the many people who have come to stay here. I asked this from Vikram as well. Mr. PRS Oberoi told me he always knew the hotel would have to be temporarily shut down, and it was the two of you that had to make terms with it. Is that correct? Well, there were many plans. <laughs> I think one of the thoughts was to was to actually start again, but I think that proved to be too complicated. Hmm. And the basic bones of the hotel are good, so I think Mr. Oberoi decided that uh, we need to renovate the existing structure. And uh, to that extent, uh, yes, it would be best that we close the hotel because we also didn't want to disrupt. Uh, the, guests. the guests that would stay here. Which is your most favorite restaurant in this hotel and the favorite dish? Favorite dish? Gosh. My favorite restaurant. Well, I think 360 is a, is a great restaurant because it mm. really took the city by storm. Yeah. Uh, there were many things there which were, uh, which were innovative and new and uh, both to India and, and to, to our company at the time. Um, of course, the sushi there is fantastic, so that was a breakthrough in many, many respects. Yeah. Um, so I'd say yes, and that's going to be the biggest challenge, how to relaunch that restaurant and keep it uh, top of mind top, and, and make sure that it's really innovative and uh, is prepared to, to take on the customers for the next 10 years. Kapil Chopra, currently the hospitality group's president, started his career in the Oberoi New Delhi as a front office manager. He now works very closely with the Oberoi family. So I remember meeting Cheryl uh, Sandberg from Facebook at the Oberoi Gurgaon and I said, welcome to the Oberoi when I met her. And I thought because we do not have any presence in the United States that she may just take some time to relate to the Oberoi and she says, I love coming back and staying at the Oberoi. And we were slightly stunned because we had already looked up her profile and had realized that she'd never been to India in the last foreseeable future and not stayed with us anywhere. So I said, uh, she says, and my favorite hotel is the Oberoi in Delhi. And I said, uh, that's great, uh, Cheryl, but I, I really tried a lot, but I couldn't really find you staying there. She says, no, that time was not working for Facebook. In the 90s, I used to come to the Oberoi Delhi because I was working for a World Bank project on water conservation in Madhya Pradesh. Wow. So we would go to Madhya Pradesh, there were no great hotels, and uh, it was days since we would get a decent shower. So the Oberoi New Delhi was the heaven for us to come back and take a decent shower <laughs> and really uh, live in luxury. And, and, and I thought that was a really interesting story. And so she stayed with us at the Oberoi Gurgaon because she was meeting all the corporate mm. CEOs for two nights, and then she was here with her kids. And she came and stayed here at the Oberoi Delhi for, for uh, three days. And we ran a big banner across the hotel and said, welcome back, Cheryl. <laughs> so this is like, now you know who I am and yes. I still love this hotel. Exactly. So it was, it was, it was, it, it, and I think there are many, many stories like this. Actually. You also have a tough job of, you know, as your president of also managing the finances and making sure everything is running smoothly. This is a profitable hotel, not just because of your rep bars, the revenue per average room, uh, but also because of the restaurants that you have here. It's going to take a dent on your balance sheet, plus you have to undertake a capital expenditure to renovate and restore the hotel. Yeah. So what's the plan? So, so you should really look at it. Uh, it means, uh, you know, very proud to say that we are India's pretty much only profitable hotel company. Not this year, but for the last three, four years. The numbers are in the space. Uh, we had a great year. We actually doubled our net profits in the last year of, of the UPA government also, when everybody was saying that you know there was a there was not much happening uh, on the economic uh, front, but we we were pretty uh, uh, doing well. I think we've got a renewed energy in our sales and marketing focus, 
And I'll give you a very interesting statistic. Uh, on an operating level of profits, today, with the Obroy New Delhi closing, I'm still going to be making a substantial number of what I did two years back with the Obroy New Delhi in. And that is one of the reasons why the decision really to do the Obroy Delhi has been taken now. Hmm. Because I think we have crossed that hurdle. Uh, two years back, with the Obroy Delhi, uh, the amount of money we were making on an operating profit level was is actually uh, lower than what we budgeted this year. So how without much? the Obroy Delhi. How much is it? But I think those are numbers which are... Which You're are, a public which industry are, company. But those numbers would come out when... I, I think I need to first inform the stock markets, no? Okay. <laughs> because, because of uh, those reasons. But, but just to give you an example. So, so I think, yes, obviously, because when you, uh, when you incur capital expenditure, uh, when, you, uh, when you close a hotel down like this, uh, there is a temporary blip of a year, financial year or a year and a half. But I think the returns are going to be phenomenally substantial because, again, the engine's all wired up. Uh, but how long do you think it will take for you to start showing returns? The way that I look, look at it is, the day this hotel opens, in the first month, we're going to have a record gross operating profit. And you can ask me on the 30th day. Is that good because of the restaurants or the rooms both, or everything? Both. Both. Because we're so well organized uh, that uh, we are very confident. So uh, when you open, are you going to, the, the room rates, are they going to be far more? Uh, so the Oberoi New Delhi will have the highest average room rate for any city hotel in India when we open. And that is what I can promise you. I said the same to your channel for uh, four and a half years back at the opening of the Oberoi Gurgaon and I kept that promise. And it's time now for us to check out of the Oberoi in New Delhi. Thanks for watching the CNBC TV 18 special. Let's go, 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 let's go